2021 was a very weird year for games because it felt like a lot was set to drop. Like this was looking to be a pretty strong year and then nothing happened. But at least we had that dodgeball simulator, right? I didn't play nearly as many games this year as I did last year, but I was still carving through titles in the first half of the year. January set the tone for my gaming life this year as I absolutely finessed William for his Nintendo Switch that came with not one, two, three, four titles that made my top 10 list, and all of that for just 200 bucks. That's what you call a nice deal. Auto Chess, this game is cool. It became the first piece of media to make me care about chess since the Queen's Gambit. Uh, human fall flat. Let me play as my uncle. All bumbly. Look at it. Look at how he moves around. Um, look, wait, wait, watch this. Watch it. <laughs> the Witcher 3 expansions just blew me away and also made me even more sad about how Cyberpunk turned out. I played quite a few Mario games this year and the one that stood out to me the most was Galaxy. I loved the level design in this. Great way to break open the mold of sprawling exploration in favor of restrained but more focused levels. Let's get to some of the letdowns though, because there were quite a few. I finally got around to playing the remastered campaign for Modern Warfare 2 and I have to say I was absolutely underwhelmed. I may very well be a victim of the hype train, but I just didn't get why everyone loves this thing so much. To me, it was fine. It didn't like blow me away or anything. It was pretty generic if you ask me. And after a lifetime of hearing this thing get talked up to the point of basically being the Bible too, that might be why. Loic says that I didn't play the original, so I wouldn't have had the nostalgia that so many people associate it with, and I think he has a point. Speaking of nostalgia, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, we gotta talk about this. Now what you gotta understand about me is that LEGO Avengers might be my favorite game of all time. It was basically Marvel GTA, and as a kid, there's nothing better that you can do with your time. This game is not that. And it's made me wonder if my nostalgia glasses are maybe on a little too tight when looking at previous LEGO games, the Star Wars ones included, and I would hope not because those games hold an extremely special place in my heart. I'm just, oh, I pray that the Skywalker Saga just fixes that and delivers, please, for the love of God. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. Now, this one's important. Japan, I, I want you to listen to this. C careful, come, come here. I love your food. I love your fashion. I like most of your television. Xenoblade, and JRPGs for that matter, are just not for me. And you have to understand that this was all I did in January. I played the shit out of this game, and it did next to nothing for me. I'm ready to accept that maybe the genre as a whole is just not for me. The Crew 2, oh my god. Much like Need for Speed last year, what the f*** happened? The Crew was an underrated classic in my mind, and the addition of land, sea, and air mobiles should have all but guaranteed this game as a hit. But no! What did you do to the environments? No, dude! Why does it look like that? This just solidified the fact that Xbox rules the market when it comes to car games, and it's not even funny. All of this negativity aside, the one shining moment I had from gaming this year was probably <laughs> dressing up my character in GTA as the weekend. Alright, time to separate the boys from the men. Let's do this. <laughs> Enter the Gungeon is the hardest indie game I've played since all of them. What I love is how the entire world is unapologetically made of guns. You've got the environments that are designed after handles, the enemies are little bullets, the bullets have guns, there are guns that shoot other guns out of the gun you just shot. The entire game is just guns, which makes me wonder why fans of shooters haven't flocked to this game in droves. Probably because it's hard as shit. <laughs> I'm not here to tell you why Smash is good, we all know that. I'm here to tell you how slept upon the story mode for this is. Hands down the best plot for a fighting game story of all time, seeing as it's literally just Infinity War. But I got a lot more than I expected out of the spirit battles. The way they mix up the kind of opponents you face, and the way they integrate different characters and IPs through the helper cards are really what helped the spirits mode stand out to me and be such a fresh surprise. Honestly, the only reason I have this game here at all is because of that one level where you have to fight 20 Mario's who are all kicking soccer balls at you. Uncharted 4 is single player narrative action fine tuned to perfection with the big bombastic set pieces counteracted by the Marvel level acting in between. As I stated in my review, as much as the middle really drags, it is sandwiched by a genuine 9 out of 10 game in the beginning and the end. <laughs> When the Nintendo Switch first came out, Breath of the Wild was the game to get, and even when Mario Odyssey came out, nope. I still overlooked it. I didn't think it looked like a bad game, just I didn't really see anything that appealed to me. Well, this year, I decided to take a chance on it, 
and oh my god, it paid off. Playing this for the first time was like going to your favorite theme park for the first time. Just so many things to see and experience, and they're all so much fun, and they're all jumping at you, and you're wanting to go on every single thing and do everything because it's all so good. New Donk City might be one of my favorite sections from a video game, period. It is just that good. This game is so filled with life that it at times gets a little overwhelming. <laughs> If you want to know the game I put the most amount of time into this year, it was without a doubt MLB The Show. Uh, but uh, coming in a close second though is Tetris 99. I played this game to absolute death this year. Tetris is a classic and I don't need to tell you how it works, we all know how it works. But now let's say that there's a certain amount of time, alright, and you're racing against 98 other people. Put that for free on the Nintendo store? Now you get what I mean. This is without a doubt the best battle royale game and I don't even want to hear any competition. This shit was downright addictive. I don't think I've seen a gameplay loop that is so simple and yet so enthralling since probably gambling. <coughs> Abzu is a game about this scuba diver who's looking for weed so he can hang out with his dolphin buddies and go swimming. It's a very relaxing, beat it in a night type game similar to Journey. And for my money, Journey was the better game but Abzu had better visuals, better storytelling, and honestly, better atmosphere. Ooh. Hitman 2! Y'all already know what to do! What the f- Ooh. What more do you need me to say? This game was the shit! No Time to Die was nothing compared to the banana peel physics. So sleek, so fun, so stupid, so much freedom, it's so good! The only reason it's not my number one is why the f- do I need to be constantly connected online in a single player game, I.O.? Hello? Hello? Doom! Hell yeah! It's like an adrenaline shot to the fucking nervous system. It's like you met Dante and Virgil, but they offered you cocaine and you went down into Inferno and killed a bunch of demons together and had a grand old time. Hell yeah! Live, die, and repeat of the American dream, brother, stars, and stripes. When I finished Celeste, I was shaking. Not only because I was on the verge of tears from finishing the story, but because I died over a thousand times on the final level. Celeste is such a genius game, taking you on a narrative journey that is directly reflected in the gameplay, with the main character's mental health struggles being represented by her urge to conquer the mountain. For a game that has three buttons, it is harder than a squirrel's ball sack, as this might be the best level design I have seen in a video game, period. But oh man, I would have never even made it to the top if it wasn't for that goddamn soundtrack that kept bumping along, holding my hand through the dark, and urging me to conquer that mountain. So I played Skyrim. Oh,